Hi, I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. HIV is a virus that attacks the body's immune system. If not treated, it can lead to AIDS, which puts the body at risk for life-threatening infections and cancer. Once you get HIV, you've got it for life. And while there is no cure, it can be controlled. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 1.1 million people in the U.S. have HIV. More than 36,000 people are diagnosed with it every year. And while 65% of those being diagnosed with HIV are gay men, heterosexuals can also get HIV. Women can get it. Pregnant women can pass it on to their unborn babies. Here to talk about uh, HIV and AIDS is Dr. Brian Kim. He is a family medicine doctor with the Scripps Coastal Medical Center in San Diego, California. Thanks so much for being with us, Dr. Kim. Thanks, Susan, for having me. So let's start with the basics. HIV stands for what? It stands for human immunodeficiency virus. So what's the difference between HIV and AIDS? So HIV is the name of the virus that causes AIDS, and AIDS is the actual collection of complications that can happen when your immune system is being adversely affected by HIV. And what are the symptoms of HIV and AIDS? Uh, the symptoms for HIV, largely, if you get the acute infection, you'll have a flu-like illness, which can be very similar to flu or strep. Um, but after that, you're largely asymptomatic, although sometimes people can get some uh, recurrent infections like herpes or yeast infections. Um, and then the symptoms of AIDS depends on the type of infection that occurs as a result of a depleted immune system, of which there are many. So if it acts like the flu, how do you test for HIV and AIDS? Uh, the way you test for it is with a really simple blood test. So how do you get HIV and AIDS? Um, you can contract HIV and AIDS uh, if you get exposed to it, principally through sexual contact or use of unclean uh, needles that could be contaminated with the virus. And who's most at risk? The populations most at risk are the uh, men who have sex with men population that comprises about 69%. Um, but heterosexuals are also at risk, 23%. Um, injection drug use is also another common route and they comprise about 7%. Um, furthermore, uh, Blacks and Latinos are also at elevated risk and a lot of that is attributed to healthcare disparities uh, with these populations. How does a pregnant woman pass on HIV to her unborn child? Um, there's multiple ways, but it can happen during pregnancy when the virus transmits through the placenta to the uh, baby. In addition, transmission can also occur during labor and delivery through exposure to blood, and it can also be transmitted through breastfeeding. So in the 1980s, when HIV and AIDS was discovered, it was basically a death sentence, right? I mean, that's no longer the case now. You can live a really long, healthy life even with HIV. Why? There's two big reasons. Number one, the drugs are very effective. And number two, they're very safe. And so what we found is that if you treat HIV very early, then you can really prolong people's life expectancy and they can have almost a normal life. So how do you treat HIV and AIDS? The way we treat it is with medication and there are different types of medications available. The most important thing is making sure that you take the medication consistently because what it does is it basically stops the HIV from replicating and progressing to affect the immune system adversely. Can you prevent yourself from getting HIV in the first place? Because the symptoms, as you said, present a lot like the flu. Absolutely. Prevention, um, you know, traditionally has always been condoms, but now we have PrEP, which is basically preventive medication that you can have to prevent HIV. And another very important way to prevent HIV is to actually treat patients who have HIV, because if you bring their HIV levels down, then their uh, risk of transmitting to others is near zero. Should everybody get a test for HIV? We do recommend everyone get a test. In fact, the CDC and US Preventive Services Task Force recommend that everyone have an HIV test somewhere between age 15 and 65. And of course, if you have risk factors, then you should do it more frequently. And talk about the stigma of getting it and not talking about it with your significant other. How important is it to be completely honest? It's very important to tell your significant other because actually one of the biggest determinants in staying on treatment is having a good support system. A lot of people have difficulty with getting the diagnosis and sometimes people may not cope with it well. The way to be able to cope with it well is to have a good support system so that you can take your medication 
and live a normal life. And so with the medication, you can basically make HIV virtually undetectable in your body, right? The levels are so low that you can go on and have a healthy, normal sex life and not give it to your partner. Is that correct? Absolutely. As long as you take the medication, the viral replication stays very low and there's very little risk to any of your partners. Um, in addition, um, you are very unlikely to get serious complications in the long term. But if you don't treat HIV and AIDS, what can happen? It's almost like being back to where we were when we didn't have treatments. It will slowly deplete the immune system and then the unfortunate events start occurring such as opportunistic infections and some cancers. And we talk about living with HIV, not dying from it. I mean, all you have to do is look at former NBA great Magic Johnson, right? He was diagnosed back in 1991. He's now been living with it for what, more than 30 years. His wife was pregnant when he was diagnosed, but she never got it, neither did their unborn son. So he has lived this long, wonderful life with the virus. Yes, and that's just a testament to treatment. If you have treatment, you can live pretty much a normal life. Any final thoughts, doctor? I think that um, it's very important to be aware that HIV is still around. We are still seeing it in large numbers. Treatment is much better, but it still underscores the importance of having a healthcare provider who can work with you as a partner to help you get the treatment that you need so you can live a very healthy life. Dr. Kim, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Susan, for having me. If you want more information about HIV and AIDS, just click on the link or go to scripts.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. At Scripps, we're here for good. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks for joining us.